What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Carrie Too Smooth. We back again. Um, listen, it's conversations with me. So if you got any questions regarding guitar, anything like that, let me know. I'm here to answer your questions. I'm here to help you out. I'm here to, like, you know what I'm saying, just provide any kind of insight. Um, so that's what we do. So when you come on, just say who you are, where you're from, because this is also a great way to network with other people, uh, other guitars, because you never know. Like, you may be in the same city as somebody else is really what it's all about, so... And let you guys come on um, and introduce yourselves. That's what it's all about. Got to stay hydrated. Got to make sure, you know what I'm saying, you're getting everything that you need. I'm feeling good, staying on track. So, yeah, so this is an opportunity for you to ask any kind of questions that you may have regarding guitar, uh, anything like that or whatever. This is what I'm here for. I'm open book, so gonna be in here for a little bit just you know ask, ask any of your questions you may ask something about practice routines you may ask like you know connections in the industry like what is it like working with a major artist what is it like being on tour what is it what what do you have to pack what do you have to do like any kind of questions that you may have this is an opportunity for us to really just connect and ensure that we're like you know getting the stuff that we need to get so this is really cool so take your time wake up do your thing with me this is really what it's all about so take this opportunity let's get connected I want to know from you guys, what kind of gear are you guys using? Like, you know, are you using any new guitars, any new strings now that the world's opening up? Like, you got any sh new shows coming up? Like, what's what's that look like? How is everybody doing today? Like, what does that all, you know, how does that all look? That's really what I'm trying to figure out for you guys, specifically. So if you got any kind of questions when it's coming regarding guitars or anything like that, just let me know. We are here to answer some questions, so. What's up with y'all got? What y'all got? What y'all got? What's good? What's goody? Yep, yep. Y'all can come on in here. Ask any question that you want. This is what it's all about today. I want to answer your questions and help you guys out um, as much as possible. Also, if you're brand new to this channel, do me a huge favor, um, subscribe to the channel, click the bell to be notified. So when I'm coming on here from time to time, sometimes I may just be playing, sometimes I'm going to be answering questions, or I may be teaching. That's what I want to you know, help you guys out. How do you play guitar in all of your keys? So what happens is you want to work on a formula. That's why I teach the number system. Understanding the number system will definitely help you play in all of your keys. That's what it will help you do. It'll help you figure out what chords I should be making at particular times. I should know what kind of patterns and what kind of shapes. So understanding the number system is really going to help you play in all your keys. Coachella, California. What's up? What's up? Morning. Morning. How's everybody doing? That was a great question. Greeting uh, my fellow guitarists. That's what's up. Hope everybody's doing well. Like I said, this is an opportunity. You can ask any kind of question. I'm here to answer your questions, here to help you guys get more insight uh, when it comes to your guitar journeys or just if you have questions about like, yo, how do you do this? Or what is this like? What does this feel like? I'm trying to help you guys any way that I can. We, Louisiana in the house. What's up? Good morning. Good morning. Lafayette. That's what? Definitely. Talking about um, augmented and diminished chords, please. So whenever you're going to use different kind of chords like that, you want to definitely ensure that you're placing them in the right space. These are just chords that are like give you like a different kind of uh, opportunity to expand your chord vocabulary. A lot of this stuff that you're doing, especially when you're doing augmented and diminished, it's all about placement. So experiment with them. Experiment and see if they fit with what you're doing. They may not fit in the necessary style that you play. So you just got to see if it fits. What's up from South Africa? That's what's up. What's up? What's up? Uh, you think I can learn to play electric on an acoustic? Exactly. You definitely can. Listen, the concepts are the same. There may be a few tweaks when it comes to you practicing on an acoustic that you have to be a little bit more percussive than you do on an electric guitar, but you can definitely learn um, to learn how to play it. So yeah, don't don't get so fixated on that. The number system like one through seven? Yes, the actual number system like one through seven for sure can help you play in, in all of your keys. Because if you're playing in C sharp or if you're playing in E flat or F, they're all the, if you know the numbers, then you know what kind of chords you should be making 
in a particular part of the progression. So yeah, the, knowing the numbers will definitely help you play in all of your keys. And using the same at, same format and formula will help you all the time. G minor and C minor are the seven F sharp, please. Please talk about guitar maintenance. So when it comes to guitar maintenance, you definitely want to uh, keep your fretboard clean. Like you get a lot of gunk and stuff from your fingers, like keeping your fretboard clean, getting some oil to so make sure you can do on that, changing your strings. Um, if you play frequently, you want to change your strings more often. If you don't play as frequently, then you don't necessarily need to change your strings as often. But if you start to see that, you know, um, your strings are starting to get kind of rusted and corroded, you may want to check about the, you know, um, having a humidifier in your room where you keep your guitar and if you want to keep it out or whatever. There's a lot of different things that you can do in order to make sure you maintain, like getting a, like a rag and like wiping down your guitar. You can do it after every time that you play. Those are different things you can do. Uh, I've been playing for like a year nonstop. Now I feel stuck. And everything I play, I try to learn is either hard or too easy. So, Brian, that's a part of the guitar journey um, that sometimes you feel like you plateau. But what I would tell you to do is look for inspiration. You can find inspiration in all types of genres of music. They may not necessarily be an R&B or neo soul. You may be watching TV and hear something and be like, oh, I'm intrigued to try to learn it. Give yourself grace. This is a marathon and not a sprint whenever you're learning how to play guitar and figure out different things. So. Find inspiration plenty of times. I, I was watching a Netflix special and I heard this like Cuban song and I was like, oh man, I was inspired. So you find inspiration all different types of ways that kind of help you get out of that plateau. What up from Highland, California? That's what's up. Uh, do you write out your solos when you're touring? No, I, 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 I don't write out my solos when I'm touring. So what happens is you have programmers that come in and they get with the MD and the programmers will help dictate um, how a solo is supposed to go. Now, what happens is depending on who the artist is and, and how much influence you have, um, we'll say like, okay, this is the kind of the scope of what we want you to do. Um, start on this note, end on this note. So we know like where the is and they give you a lot of flexibility, but for the most part, sometimes they kind of script out the solo and they say like, does this sound good? Does this feel good? Does this feel natural? And so you get to have a little bit of influence, but a lot of the stuff is already kind of mapped out, um, when you're on tour. Um, how often do you change your strings on electric guitar? For me, I play all the time, so I probably change my strings. Honestly, maybe it depends on how often I use a guitar. It might be every two weeks, or sometimes it might be like every month. It just depends. Um, is your guitar looper a good? Is a guitar looper a good tool? Uh, getting yourself out of a rut. Anything could be a great tool to get yourself out of a rut. So if that's your vibe, then that's what you do. You know what I'm saying? I start to play slow and I try to build my speed. Yeah, using the metronome would definitely help you build your speed as well. Hey, Carrie, I appreciate your video and all the songs I've learned watching your videos. My question is, two to three artists, R&B slash Neil Soul, would you suggest for someone learning to get into the genre? Um, Someone getting into the genre, who would I suggest? Uh, that's a good question if you're just trying to get into the genre. Anthony Hamilton could be cool. Uh. Uh, I would say BJ Chicago Kid. You could listen to a Lettuce. You could listen to a Jasmine Sullivan. You could listen to a Her. You could listen to uh, who else is out here? I mean, there's a lot of different options. Or you could go on Spotify and just type in R and B, like the the word A R E, and the letter N, and then B E, and listen to different playlists, and you can find a whole lot of different artists. Uh, do 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 do. I start to. No, we were talking about that. I said, do you think R and B feels fun? Uh, do you feel like R&B feels run across every genre? Because I love funk, but R&B is more of a a type of feel of playing and not an exact rhythm. No, that's R&B is definitely an exact rhythm. Funk is, is its own thing, but R&B is its own thing as well. That's why it's as big as it is. You know what I mean? I know the number system, unlike piano, where I can make triads with three notes. Does that apply to guitar as well? You can find triads on guitar as well. You can find three note triads on guitar as well. If you wanna know more about it, you should definitely check out the courses that I have on Carrie's Camp. K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com. You should definitely check it out. How do you experiment with sounds to create your own tone? You literally sit in a room and you get different sounds and you try them out and see if it works. If it doesn't work, then you know it's, it didn't work. You know what I mean? Yo, Carrie, mad love from the UK, London. Huge inspiration and in learning guitar. From your R&B videos, man, I appreciate that, man. Much love. This was really helpful. Thank you. You're more than welcome. Does gospel courses cover CCM? No. Um, in in the camp, we have some stuff for the CCM, but majority of the stuff is gospel influence. You know what I mean? But there is some CCM stuff in the gospel course. Uh, what does a new guitar? It says why 
does a new guitar not sound as good as a guitar that's been played for years? That's not true. I have a brand new guitar, a Tom Anderson, that sounds way better than guitars have been played for years. It's all about pickup configurations and all. There's a lot of different factors that go into that. What kind of guitar did you get? You know what I mean? So that's not necessarily true because the new guitar that I got sounds hands down is way better than any guitar that I've had for years because I specifically got it built for what I need to do. So um, what are some examples of alternative minors or diminished chords within the number system. If you really wanna know more about that, then you should definitely sign up for my courses on carriescamp.com where I talk about those kind of like different kind of chord voicings or inversions or triads or different kind of diminished chords. K-E-R-R-Y-S, K-A-M-P.com, Carries Camp. What are your thoughts on the gold guitar you have? Um, it's a cool guitar. It's, it, it definitely doesn't, um, it definitely fits the niche of what I needed to do. Um, it's very unique. It's a really cool guitar from Japan. I think it's a cool company that's really starting to do a lot of different kind of cool stuff. So um, if that, that fits exactly what you're doing, you should definitely check it out. Opeg or Upeg. I forget how they pronounce it. Is there a sweet spot for how long you should practice 15 minutes? No, there's no sweet spot. Again, and that's an ongoing question where people feel like, man, if I practice 15 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, I'm going to be straight. It's really all about your your intent behind what you practice. You can practice for 20 minutes a day. If you practice the right thing that's going to help you out wherever you're weak at, then you'll be strong. If you're practicing the wrong things and just kind of practicing for the sake of practicing, you're not going to necessarily be as strong as you want. So make sure you're intentional about the kind of practice that you do, the rehearsal time or whatever you're doing. You need to be specific on the areas that you feel like you're weak in. If you don't feel like you're that strong in a specific area, I would focus more attention on that. That's what you need to do. Some really good questions, though. Man, you're more than welcome. You're more than welcome. What up, Mr. Carey Sue Smooth? Just curious, um, what was a difficult milestone for you when you started learning chords and putting the numbers behind the system? Not knowing what the um, the chords were in the number system. I took time to really understand how the number system worked. I didn't know that like your one meant you play a major chord. I didn't know your six meant you play a minor chord. So once I understood what that meant, the relative the relationship between the minors and the major chords, then that's when it started making sense for me. That was the, probably the most challenging thing at the beginning. Uh, do you like the Strymon Riverside Overdrive? It's okay. It's not my favorite overdrive, but it's okay. I mean, there's a lot of different overdrive options out there, so it's okay. Some really good questions this morning. What kind of music would you, would a sim, semi hollow body be good for, be a good fit? It could be good for some blues. It could be good for some rock. It could be good for some R&B. It could be good for some gospel. It just depends on like who's playing in your approach. I'm learning your concepts, but I really cannot play by ears that good. It takes me a long time to figure it out. So if you're struggling with learning how to do ear training, then that should be a focus that you put your attention and practice with. It's You're not gonna get it one or two times. You, it's a repetitious thing. So if you're struggling, that's an area that you need to place more focus and attention on. How many pedals are too many pedals? Um, <laughs> how many pedals are too many pedals? If you're not using them, then it's too many pedals. That's that's all I can tell you. If you got uh, ten pedals and you only use three, then you got too many pedals. If you use if you got five and you use you only you got five and you only use one, then you're using too many pedals. You know what I mean? I want to uh, record at Florida Studios Twenty. It says, can you put the guitar cable in the interface? Yeah, you can put the guitar cable in the interface. Ear training. I play along with the radio. That's very good. How has the Raven been treating you? The Raven has been treating me well. If you pay attention to any of my videos, you'll see like it's one of my main go-to guitars. It sounds great. I've got plenty of videos that show you can hear what it can do. So the Raven is hands down is my number one guitar, hands down. Um, it's knowing the number system equivalent to reading sheet music. No, it's not the equivalent to reading sheet music. So reading sheet music has a bar and a staff and has different kind of note variations. What the number system does is it's a short hand way of learning how to play the music in a song or reading the song that with charts that make sense to you. What up, Carrie? Thank you for all you do in Carrie's camp. Um, 
it has answered a lot of my questions, guitar con questions, and on playing concepts and chords, connecting chords and exercises that I needed. Uh, looking forward to joining as a lifetime member. That's what's up, Kevin. I appreciate that. Two pedals for the rest of your life, which would they be? Two pedals for the rest of my life, which would they be? Ah, that's a good question. Two pedals for the rest of my life? Huh. Probably. Hmm. That's a good question. Probably an overdrive pedal. And probably a delay. Because I probably could use my phone to like tune my guitar and I could probably find a decent reverb on the amp. That's a good question. Uh, Mr. Carry Too Smooth, uh, when are you going when are you going to video you playing for the next gig or performance, either church or a show? Is it possible for you to also do any do I have any plans for the fourth? Um, so I, I've got a video coming out pretty soon where I'm going to show like me doing like, you know, like doing a vlog style where I'm, I'm on taking a road trip, going to play at a local gig in my, with some of my friends back in Birmingham. So that's coming out pretty soon. So you get a chance to see that. So that question is being answered. Um, distortion and why is where I would, where, where, where the sound is at. I can't stand a wah pedal. Honestly, I, I, I've gone past wah pedals for me. So. But I feel you, that's your vibe, that's your vibe, you know what I mean? My hardest block is knowing what extended chord quality is being played. That's a part of ear training, so you're going to have to give yourself some grace. It's a marathon and not a sprint. Both of y'all trying to come out the blocks and feel like y'all supposed to get it, and that's just not how it works. That don't work for no, unless you're just a child prodigy, it does not work that way. So you're going to have to like take your time in working and like learning how to do this stuff. So give yourself some grace. You're not going to figure out how to do all these chord extensions at the beginning. Nobody knows that at the beginning. It takes time to learn. It takes sometimes for some people months. It may take years. It's just a part of the process. It's a part of the journey when it comes to you playing. Um, do you tune your guitar for whatever the standard tuning is? That's what I tune my guitar. Um, are you going on tour with any artists soon? Uh, as it stands right now, I mean, I've got a couple calls, but nothing is solidified until, you know, we sign whatever kind of contract. So, I mean, a lot of stuff is hearsay right now. Um is your income decent if you weren't doing YouTube? So Toasted, I don't make any money off of YouTube right now. So most of my money comes from me playing music. So yeah, my, my income is more than decent. Um, what is it about the wah pedals that you don't like? I don't I don't need that. That doesn't fit my sound anymore. So like, no, wah pedals don't benefit me at all anymore. So it just doesn't fit my sound. If you've ever heard me play, you understand that wahs don't, don't necessarily fit my sound anymore. There was a moment for like a couple years where wall was really important, but nah, not anymore. Andrew, that's exactly right. Andrew says it takes time. Even the best learn something every new uh, something new every single day. Add merch to your channel, and I'll buy a mug or a shirt or something to support. Uh, I'll keep that in mind. I'll keep that in mind. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Envelope filters are cool, but it's it's a niche thing. I, I used it on a record um, that I, I did a lesson I talked about that uh, you comfort me. So if you heard it, like a lot of these, and there's no cap against nobody else, but you know, no shade or anything against anybody else. But a lot of these guitar players are influenced by a lot of things that I've done. Like I've, I've done that stuff way before people were doing that kind of stuff. And, and sometimes, you know, they get influenced and be like, oh, man, that sounds really cool. I should definitely do it. So I've been doing that stuff a lot longer than a lot of other people are doing it. So you never know. They could have been influenced by some of the stuff that was on in the beginning. I'm really enjoying Carrie's Camp. Learning a lot. Thanks, man. Man, you're more than welcome, Joe. More than welcome. Uh, what is the best song for a new song? So what is the best song and new songs you play every day? There's no best song and new songs I play every day. It just depends on what I'm learning. You know, like I said, again, I'm inspired and I'm influenced by a lot of different things. If I'm learning music for a show or if I'm watching TV and I hear something, whatever, I'm influenced by whatever. So I'm learning new stuff every single day. You ever thought about doing um, a clothing line that are, it's guitar related? Uh, no. And I'm going to tell you why. Like clothing... And doing brands like that is probably one of the most inconsistent markets and nobody's really going to buy consistently your stuff. So no, I'm not, that's not something I want to do. I used to have a t-shirt line a long, long, long time ago, but it doesn't make any sense. August Alcina has a song. I think I heard you. Sincerely, yeah, that's that's me on my guitar. That's my guitar. 
Um, I like how you and your instant videos play the song like it's you played live when you were selling at the end. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Love your channel and your lessons, man. I appreciate it. That's what it's all about. I just want to definitely share and give insight and help out as much as possible. Mm, mm, mm. Some really good questions today. You guys are firing off some really good stuff. So, for sure. It says, can you transpose a song on the spot if a singer? Heck yeah, I can do that, man. There's been plenty of times we've learned a song in a specific key, and the singer's like, yo, I don't feel good today. I need to drop the three keys. Or even, a, I got to get ready to play um, for um, an artist this Thursday coming up. We did a rehearsal. The song is in F, and she was like, yo, I want to take it up a whole step. We had to modulate to G on the spot. It's in rehearsal. She wants me to run it flawlessly from the top. So yeah, it's been plenty of times I've had to transpose songs. That's why it's really important for you to know how to play in all of your keys and you to understand how the number system works. Because if I did not know the numbers, I would not be able to be like, oh, okay, cool. I mean, I remember the song, but I know like, okay, cool. I'm going to the six right here. Okay, cool. Then you next thing you go, go to the two, you go to the three. I, it helps out tremendously. It'll take a lot of pressure off of you. Uh, how would you go about teaching kids to play guitar? Uh, they're showing interest, of course. So it depends on how old a child is. Like I would probably not start working with somebody unless they were like 10 or 11 because their retention and then their attention to detail is like, it wouldn't really work. So the first thing I, first thing I would do, like find like songs that they could actually start to make songs. So I started working with my niece. She was like 11. Uh, we started working on kind of campfire tunes or whatever. We started learning, number one, how to play a scale. We started working on three chords. I believe the first three chords that we were like a G, a C, and a D chord. So we can do like campfire songs and like she could write lyrics and kind of feel like it was something that was kind of fun, like a video game kind of vibe. If you don't make it fun for kids, they're gonna be like, man, I don't wanna do this. So. If you know the number system, do you think learning the circle of fists is necessary. I really hate when people ask this question about the circular fist because I'm just like, bro, y'all just, y'all trying to throw out some randomness that does, it makes no sense. Like, I honestly would really like want everybody to just lose the whole circular fist thing because it's, you guys are trying to make yourself sound like you're doing, it's, it's not necessary. No, to answer your question at the end of the day, no, it's not necessary. Learn the numbers, learn the scales, and then start applying that because nobody's going to ask you like, can you play circular the fist on da 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 da? This, it sounds cool. It's like one of those guitar like little like we're just gonna have a sidebar kind of situation. But like at the end of the day, it's not necessarily so. Like, from me to you, drop the circular the fist thing. It's just it's not worth it. <laughs> How to stay consistent and practice every day? Just do it. That's how you do it. There's no magic formula. You just got to do it. There's no magic wand. There's no magic potion. You just got to do it. Uh, just learn. Uh, you could tune the three chord to a major chord and it makes the diminished pretty pumped up. Cool. Cool. I'm a reggae, soca, and gospel guitarist, um, but your videos totally transform my playing because I incorporate neo soul into my playing. Thank you so much, man. You're more than welcome, Andrew. Uh, is it a must to know all inversions for every chord to get different voicing? Is it a must? No, it's not a must, um, but it definitely will help. What is your favorite genre of food? Genre of food? What's my favorite genre of food? Mm, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, I didn't know. I'm new, thanks. <laughs> I'm just coming. Oh, that man. Christian, it's no problem. I'm not tripping. I'm just saying like a lot of people come with that question. And it's just like, it's one of those like to try to make myself appear like I know more than what I know kind of situation. So just, yeah, I would definitely steer away from that, you know, or people who kind of pre present that kind of ideology. Uh, don't just walk by your guitar as they scream. It says, just don't walk by your guitar as they scream at you to play. All right, learning a bunch of chords, um, but pants... With pants at solos, would you recommend practicing the A minor pentatonic scale to start getting better? 
Um, if you really want to learn how to solo, you should definitely sign up to my course. Um, I've got plenty of soloing techniques that are going to really help you. If you've ever seen me play and see me solo, then you know I'm giving you all the same exact sauce. So go to carriescamp.com, K-E-R-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com and check it out. Food is like music, depends what mood you're in. That's true. What up, Carrie from Chino Hills? Cool, cool. What up, Mr. Red? I'm loving the camp. Getting better every day. That's what it's all about. Uh, Mr. Kerry Too Small on Carrie's Camp. Can you upload a bunch of guitarless backing tracks? So, Lee, if you go on there, there's plenty of pra practice tracks on there. So, there's plenty of backing tracks and practice tracks for you to work on. So, um, if you had to summarize what distinguishes Neo Soul from other genres, what would it be? So neo soul is a term that record labels use. Neo soul is just R and B. It's just a new age R and B. So what distinguishes R and B from any other genre, like pop or like hip hop or like country? You can listen to the lyrics, lyrics and chord choices. That's what changes anything or makes it different from any other genre. Mister Red, come on, become a lifetime member, man. We're looking for that. We're looking for you. Uh, listen, every single thing you see. Carry play. He has lessons in Carrie's camps from soloing to chord techniques. I'm, I'm saying I do I, because again, that's a lot of times what people are asking for. So it's, I do it specifically for the campers. That everything that I do. Some really good questions. All right, I'm gonna take a few more questions from you guys. And I'm going to let y'all enjoy y'all Saturday. I got some some other stuff I need to do, some other work I got to do. So, Have you ever heard of Tory Lane's new project, Smooth Looks on That Joint? No, I haven't heard of it, but it might be, uh, what's the dude? I can't remember his name. I think I know the guy who might be playing on it. Okay. I love the fact that you're so humble. Appreciate it. Uh, best way to get better playing with other musicians. Do it. That's the best way. You got to listen. You got to be sensitive enough to know when to play certain things, when not to play certain things. Find yourself in a safe space with the other musicians and listen to their critiques. That's the best way. Don't you feel bad if any one of you, your students, plays better than you? Do I feel bad? Hell no, I don't feel bad. Why would I feel bad? That's the whole point. I want you guys to be play better than me. I don't teach you guys for the sake of keeping you guys like in a limited whatever. No, I want you guys to be way better than me. That's the whole point. Like if I taught my kids how to play guitar and they happen to be better than me, I would not feel any kind of way. Like that's not what it's about. Do you have any tips on how to get recognized in the recognition in the industry? <laughs> Network. That's the best way to get recognition in the industry and be consistent and be a good people person and put out a good product. Appreciate your channel. I'm on the verge of signing up for your courses. Come on, man. Sign up. I need to see you in there. Come on, do it. Your next show date in, in Beham? I don't have... Um, my next show date is not in Beham. My next show date, uh, I think it's going to be in Nashville, honestly. And I think it's going to be next week. So, But I'll keep you posted. If you're watching anything on my Instagram, then you'll see. All right, man. I love you guys. You guys be good, man. You guys be great. You guys be awesome. And um, I will talk to you guys soon. Have a good one. Love, peace, and hair grease.